Hello children, welcome to this segment of the program. It is mathematics time and that means it is time to have some fun. Hi, I'm Uncle Agbaje. Today in mathematics, we shall continue our focus on angles and its measurement. But before that, we will review the correction to the last homework. In the last homework, you were asked to find the larger angle between the hour and the minute hands of the clock. Now, I just gave you these times, but I expected that you would have tuned your clock to see uh, what the angle actually looks like. Now, don't forget it's the larger angle. So for seven o'clock, you count backwards, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are seven spaces there. And you remember that each space is how many degrees? 30 degrees. So 30 times seven gives you 210 degrees. Now, the larger angle here, if we go this way, we are almost coming back to the starting point, which means it's almost a full circle. In fact, it is almost 360 degrees. But if we count, we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 30 degrees in 11 places is 330. Yet, we still have half of it from here to here, and that is 15 degrees. So 330 plus 15 degrees is 345 degrees. This is straightforward. From here, you count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Nine spaces. Each space is 30 degrees. 30 times 9 is 270. And finally, this one, the larger angle. If I count this way, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I have seven full spaces. That is 30 degrees in seven places. That is 210 degrees. Then I still have half of it to go. And half is 15 degrees. That is 225 degrees. I'm sure that a lot of you got this right. And for that, you deserve to get a chair. Moving on to today's lesson, our objectives today will be to actually measure angles using the appropriate measuring instrument, which is a protector. I will also teach you how to draw or construct angles using that same protector. What you need for this lesson, my friend, is that semicircular thing inside your mathematical set, a pencil and probably a paper. So I'm going to give you 10 seconds to get that ready. Angles are measured with a protractor. Like I said, you will find one inside your mathematical set. This is what a protractor looks like. It is used to measure angles. How exactly? I'm going to be showing you in the next couple of slides. Now, this is a closer look at a protractor. A protractor has um, graduations from 0, 10, all the way to 180. And of course, you remember that angles on a straight line is 180. That is if you are counting from the left to the right, or what we call the, the clockwise motion. This is the way the ants of your clock move, so we'll call it the clockwise motion. It also has another word from zero here, down to 180, from your right to your left, or what we call anti-clockwise motion. At every point in time, whenever you want to measure angles, you have to be sure which of these scales you are using. You must either use the anti-clockwise motion or the anti-clockwise graduation or you use the clockwise graduation below. But you cannot use the two at the same time. I'll show you examples in the next couple of slides. Now we will practice measuring angles. To measure angles, you have to place the center of your protractor exactly on top of the meeting point of the two lines. Now, when I say the center of your protractor, I'm not talking about this point because this is a common error that a lot of pupils make. Not this point, but this point. You will find a little hole in your protractor. This is where you want to put in the center of your angle. As you will see, 
in the next slide. Now we're going to measure this angle. This is the point where the lines meet. And so you're going to rotate the protractor until the zero point is directly on top of one of the lines. So you can decide on which zero you want to use. In this case, I want to use the zero for the anti-clockwise graduation. So this is the zero. So I will be using the inner scale and not the outer scale for this measurement. Now, I make sure that one of the lines is on zero. I also make sure that the center is right inside the circle. Now, what do I do? You keep the center fixed, then you take the reading from the second line. So this is your zero, and then you take the reading from here. But when you want to read, you don't just read from this angle, you have to read directly on top of the line so that you will not commit what we call the parallax error, or basically so that your angle can be accurate. I'll take that again. You place your protractor on top of the line until your zero is exactly on one of the lines. You make sure that the meeting point of the lines is at the center of your protractor inside that hole. Then you take the reading of the second line. Now, how do we take this reading? Don't forget that I said that we are using the counterclockwise graduation or the counterclockwise scale. So which means that I will read from here. I have zero. So the second line is on top of 50 on the counterclockwise scale but it is on top of 130 on the clockwise scale. Do not forget that I said that you have to use only one of the two scales. So since we are using the anticlockwise scale, this second line corresponds to 50, and this angle is 50 degrees. And of course, you can see that this is a very small angle. It's not even up to our 90 degree angle or the right angle that we looked at in the previous lesson. Let's take a look at another example. This angle is measured now using the clockwise scale. So I take this as the zero now. So I will be using the outer scale and not the inner scale. So when I want to take my reading, I take the reading of the outer scale and not the inner scale. So look, one of the lines is exactly on top of zero, the zero for the outer scale. Then the center is right inside that hole. Now I can now take the reading of the second scale. Now of the second line, I beg your pardon, and that reading is 120 degrees on the outer scale, it would be wrong if you say it is 60 degrees, because obviously this is larger than 60 degrees. It's even larger than 90 degrees as an angle. So the right one will be the one corresponding to the outer scale. The zero is on the outer scale. Then you take 120 on the outer scale, and the correct angle is 120 degrees. Just one more example. In this case, I have decided to show you a unique or another, another unique way of measuring angles in case you don't want to use the zero then just make sure that your line is on top of any of the major lines that you have here. In this case, I'm taking 80 as the starting point. Now, to read the angle in this way, you do not need to take the reading of the second line. You only count how many spaces you have before you get to the second line. So taking this as my starting point, this is 100 of it or 80, whichever one you want to use. Let's use the outer scale. We're using 80. Between 80 and this one, you have 10 degrees. So between each of the major lines, there are 10, 10 degrees. So you now count from here to here is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Now this is 60, but this is supposed to be 70. My second line falls in between. So 60 and 70, in between we have 65. I'll take that again. This is where I want to be my starting point. So I will not take this to be zero because there is no zero there. Rather, I will count. Now from here to here is 10. Now let's go. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. 60 stops here. 70 would have been here, but my line is in between. In between 60 and 70, I have 65, and this angle is 65 degrees. Now it's your turn. What do you think the reading on, of this angle should be? I want you to study it. You have 10 seconds, then write down your answer and I will tell you what it is.
eyes on me. The reading on this angle is starting from zero, we use the inner scale, the anticlockwise scale, and it is stopping at 100. So the answer is 100 degrees. Take another one, you have 10 seconds. Eyes on me. Taking the reading of this scale, this is where my zero is, and it's the outer scale. So I will use this outer scale to measure, and you can see that my line falls between 30 and 40, and that is 35 degrees, as you can see. So you can see that this angle is even a small angle, it's not up to 90 degrees. It would have been wrong for us to say it's 145 degrees, between 140 and 150. So this angle is between 30 and 40. Using this zero, we we'll use that scale. Between 30 and 40, you have 35 degrees. Take a final one of this type. Heights on me. Now, this one doesn't start from zero on either end. So what I'm going to do is that I will take any of them as my starting point. I will take this one as my zero. Then I start counting in tens. Let's go. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, and 90 degrees. Wow, it doesn't look like the right angle, but it is actually 90 degrees. It's just that we've tilted the 90 degrees a little bit. I'll take it again so that you can be sure. I'm taking this as my starting point now. Let's go from here to this place, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, and 90 degrees, confirming that our angle is 90 degrees. I believe you have got that aspect very well. Now that we can measure, uh, we can take a reading of measurement of angles using a protractor, we can, I believe you should be able to do this on your own at home. We are now going to practice how to draw an angle or to construct an angle using only our protractor. To begin with, I, I want to show you how to draw the 60 degrees angle. I'm going to do that by drawing a dot. So go with me now, get your pencil, put a dot down and label it O, like mine here. I label my point O. Okay. Now that you have done that, you will bring your protractor and place the protractor. Mine is going to come up very soon. Please take it back. Please take the protractor back. Now my protractor is going to come in such a way that this, this dot is going to be at the center of the protractor. Now let it come up. See? Right at the center. That's the way yours should be as well. Put a dot. Label it zero. Now put that dot and let it be right inside your protractor, the center. Now what you want to do is hold down the protractor firmly. I believe you are doing that right now. Now put a dot in front of zero. You can decide to take any zero. I'm taking this zero. The zero for the inner scale. So I put a dot in front of the line for zero. This is the zero line. So I put a dot there. Don't forget, I want to construct 60 degree angle. After putting a dot for zero, the next thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to put a dot in front of 60. I'm using the inner scale. So I'll go for 60 on the inner scale. And that is this line. So this is 60. Now I can remove my protractor. Thank you. Please take away the protractor. Aha! So what we do now is that we join this line to the center. We join this line to the center. Please join these lines for me. Voila. We have our 60 degrees angle. Now, wasn't that so easy? I'm going to demonstrate with another example. In case you did not get the first one, you should get the second one. The process is the same. I want to draw the 135 degree angle. I will begin by putting a dot and labeling it zero so that I don't lose track of that one. Now, I'm going to bring my protractor and place the center on the dot. I believe you're doing that. If you're not, I'll give you 10 seconds to catch up with me. Very good. Good job, you. Now, I take um, a starting point. I want it to be zero here. Yes, this is where I want my zero to be. I put a dot in front of that zero. Now, of course, I want to draw 135. Since I'm using the outer scale, I'll go for 135 on the outer scale, and that should be somewhere. This is 120, 130, 140. 135 should be in the middle of 130 and 140. So I put a dot here. Now that I've located the two dots, I can remove my protector. Now, 
I just join the first dot to my zero and the second to my zero. And my angle, 135 degrees, is ready. This is exactly where it's supposed to be done. So I believe this was easy for you. Now, during your leisure, I want you to, because you cannot draw this, probably if you can get a snapshot, capture this scene and try to take the reading off the angles that I'm going to be showing you very soon. If you are not able to do that, you can watch um, uh, the YouTube channel of Lagos Suburb and see these lessons later and try to get this diagram. Capture this scene and take the reading on your own as your own work. You have 10 seconds. One of the things that I find in mathematics to be a problem for little children is multiplication. But multiplication can be very easy if we know the tricks. And one of the things you're going to get from Uncle Agbaje's mathematics class is the magic of mathematics. Let me show you something. Multiplying numbers by 11 can be a breeze. Very, very easy if you know just how to go about it. For example, I want to multiply 53 by 11. You do not need to go and look for your multiplication table, neither do you need to get a calculator. All you need to do is just take this 53 and write 5, leave a space and put 3. But this is not the answer. What goes in this point is what we don't know. That's what I'm going to show you. Now, we're going to add this 5 and this 3, and that gives us 8. Then you put 8 in the center. Voila! 11 times 53 is actually 583. It's that easy. Do you want to see another one? Then let's go again. 11 times 6 or 3. Again, 6, 3. Separate them. You know what's going to be here? You're going to have 6 and 3, and you put it in the center. 6 plus 3 gives you 9. Then 9 goes in the center. As simple as A, B, C. Now, something a little bit complex, but still using the same principle. 11 times 48. We take 4 and 8 and separate them. Now, 4 plus 8 gives us 12. Whoa, oh. Am I going to put 12 here? Mm, not really. I'm going to take the unit digit 2 and put it here. Now I'm going to carry 1, just like you normally carry 1 when you're doing addition, and put it here. Now 1 plus 4 gives you 5, and you have 528. Wasn't that so cool? Now, till I come your way next time, I remain Uncle Agbaje, and you remain wonderful mathematicians. <laughs>